Well, praise the Lord. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Victory in the Valley. This is Pastor Kevin Ortiz, and we're so excited. We thank God for you uh, for watching today's program. This, this program is going to change your life. We have recorded this message from Faith Pleases God Church here in Harlingen, Texas. And so we are friends. We are brothers in Christ. We're your neighbors. Amen. And God is doing great things at this church. If you ever have, a t have time, please come on out on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and come visit me. I know that God has a special blessing for you. You need to come and receive the word of God. You will never be the same again. Amen. In today's message, I know it's going to be a blessing to your life. The anointing of God is upon it. I want you to receive the word of God so that your heart will be open. But understand this, that God will lift up your faith through the word of God. And then things will begin to change because you open up your heart. For God to move. Amen. I pray that this, this, this message blesses your life and that things will change in your life in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you touch them. I ask that you use this message to have big impact in their life. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to heal them, protect them, and provide for them, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for stirring up their faith to receive your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Don't change that channel. Because my father would always say, and I say it as well, it gets gooder and gooder. Thank you for watching today's program of Victory in the Valley. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Praise God. Some people say, why, why, is, why did God call it Hebrews and not Shebrews? I don't know. I always wanted to open up a coffee shop called Hebrews. Just hire guys to brew coffee, amen? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. The Bible says that Noah heard God and what God wanted to do, and God told him, step out, build an ark. And so Noah built that ark knowing that God wanted to remove wickedness off of this world, knowing that the flood was coming. And because he heard the word of God, because he believed the word of God, because he obeyed the word of God, because he acted upon the word of God, not only was him and his family saved by God, but the Bible says that Noah's faith was so great that God in the word of God that Noah's faith was so great in what God said he was going to do that Noah was the one that caused the rain to fall. Faith is powerful. God is the one that gives you the power. But when you hear God's word and you follow God's word, then you'll see the miracle. But it's your faith that's going to make you well. It's your faith that's going to take you to that blessed land. It's your faith that's going to take you to another level. Your faith will cause you to inherit the promise that God has given to you. Amen. 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 Tell, tell your neighbor, my faith. Amen. So this world right now, we are such a unique season in this world. We have more people that are being martyred, martyred for Christ than ever before. We have, not only are they being killed because they're, 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 they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but they're being brutal, you know, mutilated. Heads are being cut off. Children are being killed in front of their parents. People are using it to manipulate others and spread fear and fear and fear and fear everywhere. Because the only reason why they do it, that's why they call it terrorism. Because it says to cut off your head so that you strike terror inside the people. So this is not a new thing. This has been done as long as, long as, 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 uh, as that religion has been speaking it. That's part of, of, of that faith. And, you know, if it wasn't that religion, it would be others. You know, right now, there, there's, there's a, a, a war between secularism and faith. You, you, you try to, to live for Jesus Christ, and they want to, to, to persecute you. 
they, they, they're okay if you, if, you, if you speak about Jesus at home, but just get ready with the time they don't even want you to speak about Jesus at home. And so there's all these things that are happening, and, and it could be one thing or another. It could be, I don't know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. There's, there's diseases that, that we can't cure. There's, there's fears that we, can't, that we have no answer to. Governments are trying to do what they can do, but nobody trusts the government. There's so much rumors, and let me tell you, my friends, don't, don't destroy your mind by listening to all the rumors. Amen. You know, th trust me, whoever's spreading the rumors, they're, they're just trying to control you in another direction. Don't play the game. The only kingdom we're serving is the kingdom of God. That's, what, that's who we are. We've been bought with a price. We no longer belong to ourselves. So we're not going to waste our time meditating on what might happen, might not happen. We're going to serve the Lord and be at peace knowing that no matter what, God is with us. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm so excited about this time, even though we hear about all these things happening. And it, goes, it seems like we're going from another level of evil and another level of persecution. But you know what? God's grace is more than enough. God's grace is, will be there. God's glory will be there. And even when it seems like evil is spreading everywhere, that's, I believe that the anointing of God is being released like never before in this season, this time, that the fire of God is going to catch hold of all the believers in Christ. And they shall preach a word just like if Jesus Christ was the one walking on this planet, commanding devils to go, speaking to the blind eyes to open, the ears to open, and pulling down strongholds wherever we go. And bringing the message of salvation. And the love of God to all men. Amen. 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 Pastor, what if we lose our life? Praise the Lord. We get to be with Jesus early. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, what, what, what if they say things bad about you? Understand this. When you serve God, God will honor you. Even when man tries to dishonor you, God will honor you. Amen. Amen. The word of God says wherever, wherever Jesus is, that's where his servants are. Some people say, well, pastor, why do you go to those, those countries and, and go to those, those strange lands? It's because Jesus is there. Jesus said, wherever, my, wherever I am, that's where my servants will be, and my Father will honor them. Amen. And I've seen, my, I've seen our Heavenly Father honor me in strange lands, even in lands where people don't even understand my language. I've seen God honor me because I was not there in my name. I'm, in, I'm there in the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, Noah faced a time where there was such great evil that God said, enough is enough. And God looked, and the only one that was righteous was Noah. And so God spoke to Noah and said, listen, I'm going to remove every living thing off this planet. But because you're righteous, you're going to be saved. You and your family are going to be saved. Thank God that God is not just thinking about you, but he's thinking about your family as well. Amen. Tell your neighbor, me and my family shall be saved. Amen. You hear a bad report about your children going the wrong way and living the wrong life, you declare they are saved in the name of Jesus. Because me and my family shall be saved. We shall serve the Lord. Amen. And so Noah heard, heard the word of God, and so he began to build an ark, a, a big boat, a big uh, construction being led by God. It, some people think it took, it took Noah 80 years or longer to build it. So just imagine this man building this big old boat in the middle of Nebraska. There ain't no water around here. Why are you building this boat? Noah says rain is coming. Nobody else believed Noah, but it didn't matter because Noah was doing what God told him to do. So when the rain came, God used Noah to keep life upon this world and to say, you know, his family was saved. The rain came, the storms came, the waters and the floods rose, but it did not touch Noah because Noah was safe in the ark. Amen. Noah's family wasn't thinking, let me out of the ark. None of the animals wanted to leave the ark. They were safe in the ark. 
When it was time for them to come in, they went in. They weren't going around saying, you know what, let me just go talk to a couple other people. Let me go have another night out. No, they came into the ark because there was salvation in the ark. And I want to tell you, my friends, the days of living in the world and living in the kingdom are gone. The Bible says that you are either hot or you're cold. But lukewarm people, God said he will spit you out. you got to be hot for God. Stop trying to figure out how to make this world work for you and start living in that world. Don't make this world your home. Make the kingdom of God your home. Then you will find life. Then you will find joy. Then you will find peace for your soul. You're not going to find it in anything in this world. I don't care less how much this world praises you and tries to give you money and tries to promote you and tries to honor you. I can care less what this world will do because the same man that gives it to you is the same man that will take it away. But when God honors you and God blesses you and God... Gives you his glory. He will never take it away. Because those same people that try to, to give you promotion and try to give you money is the same people that will, that will stab you in the back and try to take it back. Amen. If you don't believe me, go ask somebody who has gray hair. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone that has gray hair will tell you, yeah, that's right, that's right. So we live for God. And so we cannot be living in the world, but we have to be in the ark. We have to come into the ark. In the ark is peace. In the ark is, is, is joy. Jesus said, if anyone want, comes to me, they must lose their life. And then they'll find it. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I was tired of living my life. And when I was tired of living my life, I began to take on God's life, and now I find life. I find great life in Christ Jesus. And so come into the ark. Our ark is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the ark of our salvation. He's the place of our healing. He's the place of our deliverance. He's the place of our restoration. Come into the ark. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Pastor, I don't know if I could go in because I'm addicted to drugs. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. When you enter into the ark, the drugs will stay out. I don't know if I can go into Christ because I have so much pain of yesterday and unforgiveness in my heart. When you enter into Christ, when you get into the ark, that unforgiveness will leave. Because he will cleanse you. He will heal you. He will break every stronghold off of your life. He will restore you. He will promote you. He will increase you. And he'll use you for his glory. That's what God does. That's our God. He's good. He's good. He's amazing. He's incredible. And so we must be in the ark, in the presence of God. We must be in Christ. We must live in him. We must live and breathe and have our, our dwelling. Not trying to live outside of God, trying to live inside of God. By faith in, in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we go into the ark. We go into the presence of God. We, 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 we chase after the glory of God. Our only desire is the kingdom of God. We have absolutely no physical ambitions except to honor God with our life. We want to love others because he's loved us. We want to serve God because he has laid down everything for us. We laid down everything for him. So when he tells us to go, we go. When he tells us to say, we say. Every day we find our peace and our joy in his presence. In his presence, amen. Now I'm going to give you some scriptures, but I want to, I want to encourage you. I, I heard this one man, he might be here today. He sent me a message. He said, Pastor, I used to go to Faith Pleases God Church. And then some friends told me to go to another place. And I went to that other place. And I just got to tell you, Pastor, I, I, don't, I don't feel the presence of God there. I haven't been back to church in a couple of years, but I don't feel the presence of God. And I told him, I said, well, come back to church. Come back to Faith Pleases God. Okay. 
It's not that difficult. If the presence of God is there, that's where you should be. If Jesus is not there, you shouldn't be there either. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Wherever God's presence is, praise the Lord. If Jesus is not there, you leave too. You could be in dark places, but it's still experience the presence of God. If you are in a place that you don't experience the presence of God, well, it's, me, it's time for me and my family to leave. But if you're in a place, even though everything looks bad and negative, but God's presence there, well, praise God. God has something to do today in this place. God wants to use me for one reason or another. Something's going to happen incredible. Amen? Amen? Follow the presence of God. Don't, don't be trying to, to convince yourself, well, even though everything looks terrible, you know, I'm going to be here. Maybe God wants to use me, but God's not there. His presence is not upon you. When you know the presence of God, you will know whether you're supposed to be there or not. God, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He'll speak to you about people. There'll be times you'll be standing in front of someone and the Spirit of God will speak to you. Don't trust that person. Don't do that work. Don't be a part of that. But everything looks beautiful. Everything looks great. But the Spirit of God says, don't do it. And because sometimes we see the package. And we're being led by our eyes or our ears and we see the package. We end up compromising. Instead of listening to God, we listen to our lusts. And next thing you know, we're repenting before God because something has been destroyed in our life. We must follow the presence of God. In other words, you must stay in the ark. Don't get out of the ark. Stay in the ark. You might be in the ark and things might be happening around you. But my Bible says a thousand may fall at one side, ten thousand at the other, but it shall not come near you. Yeah. If I'm in the ark, there's protection. If I get out of the ark, then I'm my own God. Amen. Amen. Go with me in the, in the scriptures. Hallelujah. This is going to be good today. You're going to another level. Psalm 16, Psalm 16, verse 11. If you can, just write down these scriptures. Psalm 16, chapter, uh, Psalm 16, verse 11. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. How many of you want some joy? Let me see your hand. How many of you like pleasures? Let me see your hand. Well, it's not going to be, you're not going to find it in money. You're not going to find it in a drug. You might go up, but you're going to come down. And when you come down, your kidney goes with you. <laughs> but in the presence of the Lord is joy. In the presence of the Lord are pleasures forevermore. And it's not going to cost you your kidney. It's not going to cost you your brain cells. So many people are trying to pass marijuana in the state of Texas and across the United States thinking, oh man, if we just had more pot, we're going to be good. We're going to be happy. Yeah, everybody be stoned on every corner. Marriage is going to break up because nobody got money for nothing. No productivity. That's the, one of the most liberal people in the world is the mayor, I'm sorry, the governor of, of California. He says, I don't want it in my state because I don't want a bunch of potheads around my state because we won't do anything. He said that. But yet he's the most, one of the most liberal people. He says, let's keep it over there in, Cal in, in Colorado. And they tell you, well, you know, it'd be good if everybody just does so, you know, because we'll make more money from taxes. And, and, and there'll be less crime. None of that has happened. Colorado's paying more money trying to take care of their, their people. They're all, that are, that, are, that are addicted to that stuff. Amen? I'm not here. I'm, the presence of the Lord. <laughs> We're going back to the presence of God. Don't mind me. I'm just in my ark. I'm just floating by that stuff. Is it not going to touch me? I could be in the midst of all the drugs in the world, but it's not going to touch me. I'm not going to be addicted. I'm not going to be stuck as a drug addict. Nope, I'm going to stay in my ark under the protection of the Lord. Amen. So if you just see Kevin floating by, see me with a little row. You want to come? Oh, you want your drug? Okay. How about you? You want to come? Oh, that's what I'm doing. I go to Africa. I'm just floating by. 
The ark is open. Come on in. It's good in here. It's good in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 7. The Bible says in his presence you will find joy. You'll find pleasures. He even promises that he says you will find purpose for your life. How many people are, have been crying out, I just want to know what my life's supposed to be, what I'm supposed to do, what my life is. Well, you're not going to find it by working hard and, and studying your school books and trying this and trying that. The only place that you will find your life purpose is in the presence of the Lord. When you get in the presence of the Lord, understand it's a secret that God has. And he says, okay, if you want it, you've got to come to me. You can waste your whole life never stepping into your, in your purpose because God will never give you your purpose without his presence. Because he wants to be God and Lord over your life. He wants to be your all in all. So he says, if you want what I got, you got to come to me. Amen. If you want your purpose, if you want pleasures, if you want joy, you got to be in my presence. And when you get in, if you're hungry and you press in, I will show it to you. Amen. He says you, he will show you the path of life. In his presence is fullness of joy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There was this, uh, this, this man. I don't see him here. He's actually a police officer here in the city of, of Harlingen. And uh, a few weeks he called me because uh, he was experiencing this pain. I went to school with him. That's how I know him. He has never been to our church, but he knew I was a pastor. And he's seen what God has done through some of the videos and on the internet and what have you. Because we preach the gospel 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen. We don't stop, amen. And so he had heard and he had heard testimonies of people getting healed in the church. And so he called me up and he said, uh, he said, Kevin, listen, I, I, I got a bad report from the doctor. He thinks I have cancer in my back. And so uh, I'm supposed to get the reports later on but they said it doesn't look good. And so I, I, I said, we're just going to pray, and we're going to trust God, and we're going to believe God that, that God's report, that by, by his stripes we are healed. Amen. We're not going to believe the report of, the man, of man. We're going to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And so we prayed together, and we trusted the Lord. And he told me, he said, Kevin, I called you because, you know, I had a friend of mine a few years ago, uh, about maybe about five or six years ago, he was in the hospital on his deathbed, the priest came and gave him his last rites. His family gathered around him and said their goodbyes. And he was alone in the room. And he said, some Ortiz guy showed up. <laughs> and he said that, that, that he walked in and he took out his phone and he put on worship music. I said, oh, that must have been me, because I'm the one that does that. <laughs> and he just sat there and looked at him, just worshiping God in the hospital room. And he said that, that I got up and I went up to him, and I put my hands on him and commanded death to leave. And I spoke healing over his body. And then I left. Well, my friend was telling me, he said, well, he said that, after that prayer, life came back into him. He rose from that deathbed, and he's still strong and healthy and healed today. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so my, my friend, he, he, he asked him, he says, oh, so did you go to Faith Pleases God Church? And he goes, no, I didn't go. Well, why didn't you go? Why haven't you gone? Well, I... I don't know. I don't really know why I haven't gone. I just haven't gone. Here's a man raised from the dead and still not in the ark of the Lord. Amen. And my friend was telling me, you got to go. You got to go. When he told me that testimony, I said, Frank, you know, to tell you the truth, I can't even tell you who that was because I did that with many people. Because if someone calls me and says there's something going on that I need, they need prayer, whether I know them or not, there, I, was, I would volunteer at the hospital just so I could have access to go into the rooms. <laughs> I'd knock on the doors. Hey, how you doing? I'm Kevin. 
What's going on with you? I'm just making my Holy Ghost rounds. And I would sit there and introduce them to Jesus and worship God. And we just saturate that room in the presence of the Lord. And because the presence of God was there, there was such an anointing for their healing. And we, when we lay hands on them, the power of God would come upon them. Saw so many miracles, so many testimonies. I've done this in prisons where you walk in and there's such this, this fear that tries to attack you. And you see the fear inside the eyes of the, of the, of the people there. But while we're there, we put on some worship, and the presence of the Lord comes. And it's like, it's like you turn on the light in a dark place. When God's presence is there, people start getting happy. People start getting joyful. People start experiencing the touch of God. And then they begin to believe. They begin to trust God like never before. And then miracles and signs and wonders begin to take place all because Jesus is there. God spoke to us and told us that we are supposed to raise up a thousand disciples. The word of God says that we are supposed to go out to and make disciples of all nations. Have you been discipled? Have you been taught the ways of the Lord? Have you been led by the Holy Ghost as you have been instructed by someone who's been taught of how to live for God. We have people that want to walk with you. We have people that are great men and women of God that want to pray over your life and that they want to take on the responsibility of seeing you grow in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Today is the day to sign up. Today is the day to become part of this discipleship program. Become part of this army that we're raising up to serve the Lord. This is a daily discipleship program that you will walk with our spiritual trainers and you will experience the goodness of God. Come by faith, pleases God church, and we will, we will match you up with somebody who will, will encourage you, who will walk with you, who will pray over your life and believe God for the goodness of God for you, for you and your family. You need to become a disciple. Come by faith, pleases God church, or call 956-412-5600 and say, I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Thank you guys for watching today's program, and thank you for signing up to become a disciple today. It's a free ministry just for you. God bless you, and we'll see you in a, in a short while here at church worshiping the Lord with us. God bless you. We love you. God bless. Praise the Lord. I hope this word really touched you and blessed your life. The word of God is so powerful. We thank God for that he's made available this airtime so that we can share his love with you, share the word of God. Listen, we are here, Faith Pleases God Church, and we're here for you. We love you guys. We got a program that we, we've established that God, that's according to the word of God on raising up disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Has anybody walked with you and prayed with you and encouraged you in the ways of the Lord? Well, we want to do that for you. I want to encourage you guys to come on out to Faith Pleases God Church. We're here in Harlingen, Texas. We have people that will pray with you and will walk with you and teach you the basics of Christianity. There's no reason you should waste another year or another moment of living your life in the world when God has such a great life for you. We bless you. We love you. Come on out to Faith Pleases God Church. Join our discipleship program. You will be changed and you'll be transformed for the glory of God. Thank you for watching Victory in the Valley. We love you. We'll see you next time. God bless.